Welcome to video 7-3, Percentage Composition, Empirical Formulas, Calculating Molecular Formulas and Oxidation Numbers. So, first thing we look at, percentage composition. Okay. Now, you will be using a bunch of stuff that you learned earlier in terms of dimensional analysis and mole conversions. Okay. So, a percent composition basically tells you the percent by mass of a, each particular element in a compound. So if you have uh, a compound that has elements X, Y, and Z in it, you will have 3% compositions. What is the percentage of X? What is the percentage of Y? And also what's the percentage of Z? Okay. So for compound X, A, Y, B, okay, the percent of X is basically the mass of X over the total mass of the compound. Multiply it by 100 so that you come out with a percentage. Okay, and the percent by y, percentage by y is the mass of y that's in your compound divided by the total mass of the compound times 100 percent also. Okay, now um, if you only have two two substances, you should know that the percent x plus the percent y must add up to 100 percent. So if you know one of them, you can find out the other one. By doing subtraction also. Okay, now how do you go figure out the percentage composition for a compound? Okay, you do not have to be given any masses. Okay, so what you do is because the percentage doesn't change um, regardless of how much you pick, you get to pick as much as you want. So pick one mole of the compound. Okay, now since you have one mole of the compound, figure out how many moles of each element is present. Okay, so if you took one mole, remember this stuff, of X, A, Y, B, that means you must have A moles of X, and also you should have B moles of Y present. Right? Remember the number in front times the subscript has to equal the number in front times the subscript. Okay, then once you know moles of X and moles of Y, change them into grams. Do your dimensional analysis. Okay, next step, figure out your percent X or your percent Y by plugging them into the formulas. Okay, so uh, remember that X, oops, let's do it this way. Your percent X was equal to grams of X over the grams of the compound. Okay. This you determined. This one here, the grams of the compound, since you only you took one mole, it must be equal to the molar mass of the compound. Okay, that's why you're going to divide the grams of x and grams of y that you found by the molar mass. Okay. And repeat this for all the elements in the compound. Okay. So Figure out the percent composition of calcium carbonate. Okay, I'll set this up and then you guys can get to go through and finish it up. Well, first of all, we need to know what's the form for calcium carbonate. Okay, so calcium carbonate, no prefix in front of the second name, so that means this must be ionic. So you need your ions. Calcium is Ca2 plus, carbonate, Cl3, 2 minus. Okay, so the formula must be CaCO3. Okay, now, since I'm figuring out the percent composition, that means I need to find the percent composition for each element, for calcium, for carbon, and for the oxygens. Okay. So if I take one mole of calcium carbonate, that means I have one mole of calcium. All right. I also have one mole of carbon present, and since there's three of those, I must have three moles of oxygen present. Okay. So, I need to do three calculations. I need to find the percent calcium. I need to find also the percent carbon. And I need to find the percent oxygen. Okay. Each one of these, you've got to change it to grams. So, change one mole of calcium into grams of calcium. Change one mole of carbon into grams of carbon. And change three moles of oxygen into grams of oxygen. One mole of calcium. Calcium weighs about 40.08 grams. Okay. One mole of carbon. 
12.011 grams. Okay. And now, three moles of oxygen through your dimensional ana analysis. Okay. You have three moles of O times, get rid of moles of oxygen, change it into grams of oxygen, one mole, look it up on the periodic table, 16.00. Okay. Moles cancel out, so that means it comes out to be 48. 0 0.00 grams of oxygen. Okay. Now, what goes on the bottom? Well, you need to find how much does one mole of the compound weigh. Okay. So go calculate it. Well, nice thing about doing it this way, you have all the calcium, all the carbon, all the oxygen there. So, the molar mass is one mole of carbon, one mole of cal uh, calcium, and three moles of oxygen. So if I add up all these numbers, 40.08 plus 12.011 plus 48.00, that should give me the bottom number. Okay, And you can do that the bottom one there, and also for the bottom one there. And then last thing, multiply it by 100%. Okay. Now, empirical formulas. The empirical formula for a, any compound gives you the formula of the elements in the lowest whole number ratio. Okay. Now, ionic compounds will usually be written as empirical formulas because remember, if you wrote the formula for an ionic compound and it came out to be x2y4, you were supposed to reduce this ratio down to 1 to 2. So x, y, 2. Okay. Now, if it's a molecular compound, you cannot reduce the ratios. You can't change them. Okay. Now, how do you find the empirical formula for a compound? Well, if you're given the percent composition of each element, in other words, someone went through and told you, oh, the percent of x was 25% and the percent of y was 75%, it's possible for you to figure out the empirical formula for the compound. Okay. Now, what do we do? Well, since you're given the percent compositions, you get to pick how much you want. So, pick a nice number. Pick 100 grams of the compound. Okay. What's, why pick 100 grams? Well, if you got 25%, that means you have 25 grams. Okay. So, use the percent composition to figure out how many grams of each element is present. Okay, next thing. Basically, the percentages become the grams. Next step, change the grams into moles. Okay, and repeat this for all the elements that you have. Next step, figure out what's the mole ratio. Okay, take all the moles that you have, moles of x, moles of y, moles of z, divide it by the smallest one of those moles. Okay. Now, the moles become subscripts. Okay, write these elements um, and we, how do you know which one to write first? Write the one with the smallest electronegativity. So usually look on the periodic table, you arrange them left to right. Okay, so let's try an example here. Okay, someone went and did the uh, calculations and they said, well this compound has lithium, nitrogen, and oxygen in it. Okay, and Lithium is 13.11%, nitrogen 26.45%, oxygen 60.44%. Okay. So, figure out the empirical formula. Okay. Well, we're going to assume we took 100 grams of the compound. All right, that's a first step. So, that means the 13.11% turns into 13.11 grams of lithium. 26.45% of nitrogen becomes 26.45 grams of nitrogen and the 60.44 percent of oxygen becomes 60.44 grams of oxygen. Okay. Now each one of these has to be changed into moles okay. and change it into moles of the ele element or mo of that substance. So moles of lithium change this into moles of nitrogen, change this one into moles of oxygen. Okay, On the bottom, get rid of your grams of each substance. Grams of lithium, grams of nitrogen, 
grams of oxygen. Okay. So, one mole of lithium, its molar mass is 6.94. Nitrogen weighs about 14, and oxygen, you should know by now, is about 16. Okay, and your units cancel out, right? Grams of grams, grams of grams, grams of grams. Okay. Now, calculate these numbers. Okay, so, first one, you should get Uh, about one point, let's call it 1.89. Next one, you should come out with about 1.89. And your next one, should come out to be about 3.7, or let's call it 7.8. So this is moles of lithium, moles of nitrogen, moles of oxygen. Okay, now you cannot just simply say, oh, that's around two, I'll round that up to two, that's around two, and that's around four. Okay. You want to take each one of these numbers and divide it by the smallest number that you see. Okay, and the smallest number is 1.89. We see it twice. So that's 1.89. Divide that by 1.89. Divide that by 1.89. Okay. Obviously, those cancel out. So that becomes 1. That becomes 1. Now, the 3.78 divided by 1.89, that comes out to be 2. Okay. So what's your formula, empirical formula for the compound? Well, list them left to right. These numbers become the subscripts. Okay. So the formula should be Li. Then you got nitrogen, then you got oxygen, and the subscript should be 2. So this compound's formula, LiNO2. Hey, calculating molecular formulas. The empirical formula of a molecular compound may or may not be the actual correct formula. In other words, let's say we had a compound that had uh, this formula, H2, um, oops, let's pick a different one. N2O4, okay, this is the molecular compound, that's the actual formula of the compound. However, its empirical formula is not N2O4. It's gonna be reduce everything by two, it would be NO2. Okay, so here's a case where the empirical formula is not the same as the molecular formula. Okay, but don't forget, the actual formula, the molecular formula, has to be a whole number multiple of the empirical formula. So in other words, if someone said, well, here's your empirical formula, NO2, what's the possible uh, molecular formulas? Well, it could be N2O4, it could be N3O6, it could be N4O8. Okay, but it has to still be in a 2 to 1 ratio. Same ratio as the empirical formula. Okay. So in other words, the empirical formula, you have to multiply it by some whole number x to get the molecular formula. Okay. Now, if you're given the molar mass of the actual molecular formula, you can figure out x because the mass of the actual compound has to also be a whole number multiple of the formula mass. The formula mass is basically the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay, So in other words, the molar mass of NO2 has to be a whole number multiple of the molar mass of N2O4. Okay? And you look at, obviously, this one is twice as much as that one. So the factor x must be 2. Okay, so 2 times the molar mass of NO2 will give you the molar mass of N2O4.
Okay. Now, once we figure out x, multiply it times all the subscripts in the empirical formula, that gives you the molecular formula. Okay. So, here's an example. Okay. Go figure out the molecular formula. Percent compositions are given to you. H is 5.88% per and O is 94.12%. Okay. The molar mass, the actual molar mass of the compound is 34 grams per mole. Okay. Now, you need to know the empirical formula. We don't have the empirical formula yet. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, let's go set it up. Okay. Do our empirical formula problem. Assume we're going to take 100 grams of our compound. So the 5.88% becomes 5.88 grams of hydrogen and 94.12% becomes 94.12 grams of oxygen. Okay. Now don't forget if someone tells you there's only two elements and you know the percentage of one the other one you can figure out because notice these two have to add up to a hundred grams. Okay, So if you, you only know the percentage of one of them you can calculate the percentage of the other one. Okay, so change these just like what we did before into moles. We want moles of H, moles of O, get rid of grams of H, get rid of grams of O, uh, 1.01, .01, whoops, one mole is 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen, one mole is 16.00 grams of oxygen. Okay, so do our math, the 5.88 divided by 1.01, .01, we come out with 5.82 roughly moles of H okay. and the 94.12 divided by the 16 we come out with 5.88 moles of oxygen okay so divide by the smallest number 5.82 divide that by 5.82 this will come out to be 1 this one comes out to be really close to one, like 1.01. 1 .01. Okay, so that is basically close enough so that we can just consider it to be one. Okay, so the empirical formula is basically the elements and their subscripts. Okay, so it's H and O, and that's it. Okay, now what is the actual molecular formula? Okay, well the empirical mass of HO is basically the mass of hydrogen plus oxygen. This is 1.01, .01, this is 16, so that comes out to be basically 17.01 grams per mole. Okay, now we need to figure out what factor to multiply our subscripts by. Okay, so the X factor was basically take the molar mass the one that's given to us, divide by the empirical mass, the mass of the empirical formula, and figure out what x should be. Okay, They told us the molecular mass was 34. Okay, The empirical mass we just figured out was 17. That comes out to be 2. So what does that mean? Take the empirical formula, multiply everything by 2. Okay, and that basically means you don't put two in front, you multiply it times both subscripts. So the molecular formula is going to be H2O2. Okay, last thing we look at, oxidation numbers. Okay, oxidation numbers, think of them as charges that can be assigned to an element. Okay. Uh, they're either going to be pure elements or they're going to be in combined with other elements in a compound. Okay, now the rules. Okay, all pure elements have an oxidation state, oxidation number of zero. Okay, fluorine, if it is in a compound, it always has a value of minus one. Okay, so if we talked about what's the oxidation number of fluorine by itself, remember it's one of the diatomic ones. Okay, then the value is zero because it's pure. If we combine it with another element, its oxidation number is negative one.
Okay, oxygen will usually be negative 2 unless you figure out it's peroxide, then it's minus 1. Okay, hydrogen is plus 1 unless you combine it with a metal, in which case it's not the hydrogen ion anymore, it's the hydride ion, and that had a charge of negative 1. Okay. The group A metals, 1A, 2A, 3A, column 1, column 2, column 3. Remember their charges are plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. So basically if you figure out, oh, it's combined with a substance, you know it's charged, it's, it's, um, that's its oxidation number. Okay. And the sum of all the oxidation numbers in a compound have to add up to zero. Okay. So, in other words, let's say you had a compound X2Y3. Okay. The oxidation values for X times 2 plus the oxidation numbers for Y times 3 have to all add up to zero. Okay. And if it's just a polyatomic ion, then the oxidation numbers don't add up to zero, they add up to the charge of the ion. Okay, so let's try a couple here. Okay, H2O. Well, you know the O is going to be negative 2, and the H should be plus 1. Okay, does it follow the rule? Well, 2 times the oxidation numbers of the H, which is plus 1, plus one of the oxygens minus two that adds up to zero okay so that's work that works okay so na2so4 what's the charge on na what's the charge on the s what's the charge on the o okay well the o you know is going to be negative two that's from the rules sodium is in column one and it's not by itself it's with all these other things so it must be plus one Now, how do you figure out the sulfur? Well, we do set up a simple math equation. Okay, there's two sodiums, so two times the sodium, plus the sulfur, plus four of the oxygens. Oxygens are minus two. Those all have to add up to zero since this is a compound. Okay, so we do the math. That's minus eight. That's two. Okay. So, move everything over. Sulfur must have a charge of plus 6. Okay, PbNO3, 2. What's lead going to be? What's nitrogen going to be? What's the oxygen going to be? Okay, well, this is a um ion ionic compound okay so that means it must be the lead must have a charge to it now what charge does it have well remember work backwards that two came from up there so that means this was pb2 plus so the lead must be plus two okay the oxygens we know are minus two okay so um when we do our math okay basically two leads plus two nitrogens plus two times three so oxygens have to add up to zero. Okay. We know lead is plus two. Okay. We don't know the nitrogen yet. Oxygens are negative two. Okay. All that has to add up to zero. Okay. So Two nitrogens must be adding up to, uh, let's see, that's minus 12 plus 4, that's going to be minus 8. Move it to the other side, that's plus 8. So the nitrogen must be plus 4. Okay, now, does that mean it's the same thing in this other compound? Okay, well, Pb, is it still 2 plus? Well, remember, this 4 came up there. It's not lead 2, it's now lead 4. Okay. What's the nitrogen? What's the oxygen going to be? Okay. Well, you know oxygen's always negative two. Okay. Now another little trick you can do, because this is a compound or a polyatomic ion, you should look at it and go, oh, I know that when I see the parentheses. Okay. We can do it this way. We don't need to worry about how many are there. All we know is that the nitrite 
n plus two o's must equal negative one because this we're talking about nitrite NO2 minus one. Okay, so if I know the nitrogen here, it's gonna it's not gonna change when you combine it with other things. Okay, so we know nitrogen, oxygen is negative two, and now it has to equal negative one because that's the charge on the ion. Okay, so nitrogen comes out to be plus three. Okay, so nitrogen's gonna change depending on what it's combined with. So your your review question for today. What is the oxidation number for S sulfur in sulfite? Okay, which I will tell you is a polyatomic ion if you forgot. Plus four, plus six, minus two, zero, or minus eight.